So the next question says, how many pairs of natural numbers are there such so that the difference of whose square is 63? So basically asking that natural numbers kaise kitne pairs present hai. Whose, if you find out the difference of whose squares, it should be equal to 63. So the equation that is being formed here is that x square minus y square is equal to 63. Like difference of whose squares. So pair, suppose the pair is like x comma y, the pair of natural numbers. Now x can take any particular value and y can take any particular value. So their pair, right, signifies x comma y here. We are writing down variables here because we do not know the value of these particular variables or perhaps the natural numbers that are actually supposed to be present here. So to find out the possible number of natural numbers here, like in pairs obviously, for x and y. So the question says difference of whose squares, which means that the difference of the squares of these two particular numbers should be equal to 63. Since we know the formula for x square minus y square, it says x plus y into x minus y gives us 63. So we need to find out such values of x plus y and x minus y, which if we multiply, we get the product is equal to 63. So for this, what we can do is we can do prime factorization of 63, which will give us 21, then 7, and then again 7. So the possible products like the possible numbers that can present here whose product is equal to 63 can be 3 and 21 they can be 9 and 7 and they can be 1 and 63 right so first we'll take up for 21 and 3 now obviously x plus y will be 21 and the difference will be equal to 3 because this is the greater number so if you find out by again by equations we can get the two numbers as 9 as 12 and their difference will be equal to 3 and their sum will be equal to 21. So one such possible pairs of x comma y is equal to 9 and 12, right? Then the second numbers that we have here is 9 into 7, right? The value of x plus y is equal to 9 and the value of x minus y is equal to 7 and same was the case for 21 and 3. So here the numbers that are present are 8 and 1. Like the sum of 8 and 1 is equal to 9. So x can be equal to 8 and y can be equal to 1. And the difference will be equal to 7. So second pair that we have here is 8 and 1. Here we can write 12 and 9. Right in this form. So x should be equal to 12 and y should be equal to 9. So the next set that is present here will be equal to 63 multiplied by 1. So for x plus y, now see equations x plus y is equal to 63 and x minus y is equal to 1. So if we solve these, we'll get 2x is equal to 64. So x is equal to 32. And for y, if we need to find it, we'll just put the value here. Like if you put the value of x, so that will be equal to 32. Then y will automatically be equal to 31. So the another set of values can be 32 and 31. Like if we add these, we'll get 63 and if we subtract these, we'll get 1. Whose product will again be equal to 63. This is the way that we can solve this question. So the, pos the number of possible values is equal to 3. So the answer for this question will be equal to 3. How many integers are there between 1 and 100 which have 4 as their result but are not divisible by 4? So basically, we need to count those integers which satisfy both the conditions. That is, first is that they have 4 as a digit, like they must have 4 as a digit, be it at the 1's place or at the 10's place or at both, it doesn't matter. But at least one digit should be 4. But they say they are not divisible by 4. Which means that out of those numbers, if we take out those numbers which are divisible by 4, we get the numbers or the integers which are not divisible by 4. So first we'll write the numbers which have 4, like till what we can count. Between 1 and 100 they're asking. So it'll be like 4, 14, 24, 34. And then there will be 10 such numbers like which are from 40 till 49 which have 4. 
So right now we are counting the numbers or the integers between 1 and 100 which have 4 as a digit. So there we have 10 numbers and after 49 the integers which have 4 will be 54, 64, 74, 84 and 94. So total if we count these we have here 19 such integers which have 4. Then out of these if we remove those which are divisible by 4, we will get the ones which are not divisible by 4. It is pretty simple because to know whether it is divisible is much easier than to calculate every number. So like 4 is divisible, so we have one such number then we have 24. From 40 till 49, we have the numbers 40, 44 and 48. These are the only three numbers which are divisible by 4. So till now we have 5 such numbers. Then we have 64 which is divisible and then we have 84 which is divisible. So the concept that is used here is to check the divisibility of a number by 4, we check the last two digits of that particular number. So if the last two digits are divisible by 4, the whole number is also divisible by 4. This is the divisibility rule here. So after counting all those numbers which are divisible by 4 out of these 19 numbers which have 4 in their 1s or 10s place perhaps. So out of these 19 numbers there are 7 such numbers which are divisible. But we need to find out the numbers which are not divisible. So we will subtract 7 from 19 and hence we will get 12 as the answer. Which means 12 is the answer and there are 12 such numbers which have 4 as a digit but are not divisible by 4 between 1 and 100. So now this question consists of two statements. Statement 1 and statement 2 are given below with regard to two numbers followed by a question. Okay, so these two statements are given for uh, any particular two numbers followed by a question. So there is a question after these. Then they say which one of the following is correct in respect to in respect of these statements and the question. So it's like which one of the following is sufficient to answer the question. But they are both are. This is the type of the question that we are dealing with right now. The statement 1 says that their product is 21. So if you find out any two numbers whose product is 21. See such numbers can be if we check. So it will be 3. It will be 7. It will be 7. It will be 1. So 1 way is. 3 and 7 inka multiply kare to ho jayega another way is 1 into 21 ye bhi to ho sakta hai right then they say their sum is 10 to ek to isme bhi have two options to sufficient nahi hai sabse pehle wala to ye to main pehle hi bata rakhi hai then they say their sum is 10 ab jinka ki sum 10 ho aise bhi to bahut sari numbers hota hai for example 1 ya 9 ho sakta hai 8 or 2 or sakte, inka bhi sum 10 hai hamare paas which means that alone neither of these are sufficient to answer this particular question ke do numbers kaun se hai because numbers to aise 1 or 21 bhi ho zayengi na if, if, if you try to find out the factors of the number 21 so hence the answer for this question will be that S1 and S2 together are sufficient to answer the question but neither S1 alone nor S2 alone is sufficient to answer the question. Suppose it had been written here that their sum is equal to 23. Then the numbers could have been 1 and 21. But here since they are saying that their product is 21 and their sum is 10. So it is evident that the numbers are 3 and 7. So both the options are required. So in, the, in these type of questions we need to think of all the various possibilities rather than just thinking about the answer that comes to our mind first. For example, if we read these two statements, the answer that comes to our mind is 3 and 7 automatically. But what happens is we can forget this particular point that 21 into 1 is also 21, right? And right now we just focus upon the positive values. The numbers can also be negative. For example, minus 3 and minus 7. So there can be many such numbers. So we need to read all the conditions very carefully 
I may need to find out the various possibilities like to the extreme what all can be the options and after then we need to think upon what the question is asking.